I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This piano is a, about a hundred year old wing, wing and son, that, uh, that was the unfortunate victim of a mirrorization, if that is a word. <laughs> I just made it up, which uh, this was very popular in the, in the 1950s to do this. A lot of these pianos in the 1950s were, of course, still around because they were manufactured generally between like 1880, 1890, all the way to 1930. But in the 50s, it was much more fashionable to have a very small piano. And so this became fashionable to, to cut them down. There were even, even uh, directions on, on how to do it in piano technician journals. And so this, this mirror kind of gives it the sort of appearance, kind of illusion, I guess, of being shorter. But this, so, but this is a, it, it's actually a really good piano. The, the piano itself, which I guess makes it all the more a shame that that was done. But, uh, but the piano itself is really good and, and it, it, it holds a fair amount of sentimental value for, for this family. And so uh, they, they ended up doing kind of a partial, what I refer to as like a hybrid restoration, hybrid between r restoration and refurbish. So, so a lot of the major components that, that you'll see in just a second, like the hammers and the dampers and then, and then leather and cloth and, and keys and bushings and all of those kinds of major components, we've replaced them. And then, and then uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the other components that maybe aren't quite so, so crucial, we refurbish them, making them function as well as they possibly can considering their age. So, so like I said, it's kind of a hybrid between a restoration and refurbish. Okay, on the outside we did, we did nothing at all. This is just the original, the original finish, which in all of its uh, kid scratch glory. But let's, uh, let's look on the inside and maybe I'll tell you while I'm taking this apart. I, I asked her, this, the lady that we're doing this for, would you, would you prefer, and you'll, you'll hear this in, in just a second, of, of the, of, if, if I were to break down voicing into kind of five different tiers, very bright, bright, middle, dark, very dark, she asked us to, to voice these, these brand new hammers dark. So, so not very dark, but, uh, but, but dark. And, and, and I think as you'll, as you'll hopefully hear, hopefully it'll come through this, this uh, lapel mic that, uh, that I think, I think we, I think we nailed it. It has a very dark, rich kind of chocolatey sound. Okay, from to take it apart any further, I need a screwdriver, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, but you can you can see the hammers have been replaced, the shanks have been replaced, the dampers have been replaced, and then the hammer butts. So it's it's maybe a little bit hard to see, but the hammer butts have new leather on them, and they've also been repinned, and then the and they've been bolstered to to re restore that. Uh, there, you can kind of see the leather. They've been bolstered to restore that, that nice rounded shape. I don't know if we have any. Well, yeah, let's, let's have a look over here. Maybe, maybe it might be easy to see on one of these actions. So this, this for example, this one, we've got brand new hammers. So maybe, maybe that's actually a good one to um, come over here. And let's get a shot right in there. You can see kind of the profile under here of that of that hammer butt you can see how it's uh, fairly rounded what happens from this this is the jack right here that's what that's what pushes up on the hammer butt and then it kicks out when it lets off not that far but um, that shape right there gets kind of indented and it and it it, it messes with the shape just you know years of, of that that jack hitting on the hammer butt. And so we return that, that hammer butt to, to a nice rounded shape through bolstering. Okay, and then lots of, lots of leather and felt and well, like for example, the, the rest rail here, you can see the, the uh, hammer rest rail. We've got new cloth on there. Let's see if we can get my hand out of the way. And then there's lots of, lots of other areas throughout where the cloth has been, has been replaced. Actually, let's, let's have a look real quick to give you kind of some context of what of what rest rails look like, if you can see that, you can see that those deep ridges 
of what it looks like after these hammers, even though they don't weigh very much. Just 100 years of resting against, against that causes those deep ridges. And that uh, is the case with, with the felt and the cloth throughout the piano. Just 100 years will go a long way of kind of wearing, wearing it down. And then other uh, kind of silly stuff that, that doesn't really matter but kind of looks cool. Like taking, we take these out one by one. We don't take them out all at the same time because that would be kind of dangerous with all of this tension. But we take them out one at a time and just polish them up so they look good. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I don't know. It's just kind of cool to see. And then we redo, redo the keys, which uh, there she is. There's the key master. <laughs> She's doing set after set after set. And... She's good at what she does. So this is a set that she did, and it looks very nice. And uh, also new bushings, and that uh, there, there's a very specific kind of tolerance, I guess, in in how much these keys should move side to side. You don't want it to be too tight because that'll cause the key to stick, or that's one of the many things that could cause the key to stick down. You also don't want it to be loose because then it'll 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 be well feel sloppy. I guess. So all of those bushings, both in the front. Can I borrow one of these keys? Absolutely. Thank you. And here's a key in progress. And uh, so those are the bushings that, and that's what they look like before they've been replaced. And, uh, and so there's a pin that goes up in there and that's what holds the key in place. And so that needs to be totally replaced. Same with the balance rail. There's a pin that comes up here and that's what, uh, that's what that pivots on. And the bushings right there need to be replaced. And that's what, that's what holds the key side, uh, I guess, the tilt. What, what would you call that? The, the right angle, I guess, so it's square. So those bushings need to be replaced as well. And then, and then also things like blasting, soda blasting the keys, making them look nice. And this is this kind of a, since, since we're here, it's kind of an interesting thing to, to check out. These, these keys, they, they, come, they come intentionally oversized, so they cover every size key. That it, the keys are basically standardized, have been basically standardized for, for a long, long time. I mean, at least since 1880, probably going back quite a bit further than that even. But nonetheless, even though, even though the, the size is standard, there are slight differences, and you do want that key to be totally flush with the wood here. So, so when the key comes brand new, it's intentionally larger than pretty much any key that you'll encounter. And so, so then we have to go through and run them through all of these jigs, all these machines, these routers, to, uh, to trim them up. And then, uh, and then do some hand filing. <laughs> Get that. And can we look at that file real quick? Yeah. Okay, this file has, usually files have, they, they cut on all four sides, one, two, three, four, but this one is a special file that you can see that's kind of a mirror, mirror shine. What, what we've done is we've ground off both sides of that file so that we can, we can just focus on, on this surface here without accidentally cutting into this because it's a, it's a mirror. So it cuts only on, on that surface. It's a kind of a modified file. Anyway, thanks, Ezzy. So that's the keys. That's, that's the keys in a quick little nutshell. Let's check out under here. Okay, hey, things, are, things are clean, as clean as they can get for, for being 100 years old. And, uh, and then we go through and, I don't know if you can shadows in the way a little bit. You can see down here everything is, is tor torn out and meticulously um, cleaned and buffed and, and lubricated, replaced felt, that sort of thing. And then of course the, the pedals are also they, they're solid brass, but they, but when we get them, they're very tarnished and, and looking ugly. So we just clean them up like that. 
Okay, let's let's get to playing, and you, you'll hear what I'm talking about. Where where this this client chose dark. So not not very dark, but definitely. I would I would say if, yeah this is I mean, I'd say it's nailed. Quite a few wing pianos, and they're and they are they have some really innovative, kind of crazy designs, particularly with the pedals. Some of them have five pedals, but uh, yeah, wing wing I think was a pretty pretty high level manufacturer for for its day. Tomorrow, and I think she's going to be really happy. Thanks for watching. <laughs>